So as I've been um, teaching in the music production and engineering department, I've had a lot of my students do analyses of compositions. And I created a curriculum where I really only look at the top 10 or the top 20, whatever it might be. And so I, literally every semester, I have to go in and kind of look at, OK, what's trending now? What do I have to do? And the best thing about it is I can have the students do their analyses of compositions. Um, as I was doing that, I'm always searching for what's interesting, what do my kids need to be presented with. And I bumped into this website called Hit Songs Deconstructed. And then I actually printed out one of the reports, and it came out to about 177 pages from the Hit Songs Deconstructed website. I thought that it was incredible. It was really insightful. There was a lot of information concerning songwriting in it. There was a lot of information concerning production analysis in it. There was a, an information concerning how one thing that you might be looking at relates to other trends over a period of time. And these are entries to a conversation that can be had across disciplines, across songwriting, across business, across music production and engineering, and probably across other areas in the college. And that's why I'm glad that we're able to present this at BTOC. So I do think that there is uh, much there are many more applications for Hit Songs Deconstructed other than just the, the areas that you might think. Like I said, production, songwriting, uh, business, so forth and so on. So Hit Songs are, for me, a topic that is a little bit controversial at a music institution. Because when we look at, listen to music now, and with what's going on with digital proliferation, everybody's got Pro Tools and Logic, it seems like the quality of music has really, really declined. And it seems like when you listen to a song by Drake or Justin Bieber, you, you're hearing the same thing over and over and over. And, and it can feel like there's really nothing there for you to, to learn from, for you to exchange information about, so forth and so on. As a music producer and as an audio engineer, that could be, there's nothing further from the truth. Uh, every one of those compositions has an incredible amount of information that I'm <laughs> always learning from because the concept of hit music and top 10 music is always evolving. And it's that evolution that I'm involved with and that I'm always looking at and trying to discern where are we now, where have we been, and where potentially where, we, where will we go. And now whenever you're looking at a hit song, there's always a, well, you're three months behind because that song that's on the charts now was composed three months ago. And that is true. But over time, you can start to detect patterns. You can start to detect trends. You can start to look at what, how the language is changing. Like if you write a song in 2016 that has language from 1995, it's easy to see that you're not up to speed. So then if you're going to be exchanging information in your, song, in your class about writing songs, you kind of want to at least be able to have that dialogue with your student about where we are in 2016, where we were comfortable in 1995, where we were in 1975, and then to be able to bring your student along so that they can evolve uh, in, in their own pace. When I first heard John Coltrane, it sounded like to me. I didn't know what was going on. I was like 13 years old. I had to learn how to listen to it. Hit Songs Deconstructed is a tool that has already listened at depth into compositions that are at the top of the charts and gives you a resource so that you don't have to our trying to deconstruct it. it already, the conversation is already there for you. You can take parts of it and move forward in your curriculum and then have these types of exchanges and these conversations with your students.